Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to our um, uh, workshop uh, on uh, innovations in pancreatic cancer treatment. My name is Luisa Pagano, and uh, I'm uh, the uh, PC Secretariat Coordinator, and I will be your uh, facilitator uh, for today. We will start soon with a welcome uh, greets from uh, uh, our uh, chairperson, uh, Professor Alfredo Carrato, and uh, uh, we will continue with uh, the speakers uh, of today uh, talking about uh, uh, innovations on uh, uh, pancreatic, pancreatic cancer uh, treatment. I will introduce the speakers uh, one by one before uh, they start their presentations. So uh, I'm um, happy then to uh, give the floor to Alfredo Carrato. He is a chairperson of Pancreatic Cancer in Europe and uh, uh, professor of uh, medical oncology at uh, Alcalá University in Madrid in Spain. Thank you, Alfredo, for uh, your welcome. You have to unmute the microphone, Alfredo. Thanks very much, Luisa. I think this is a great opportunity for everybody uh, who interested in pancreatic cancer. Also for anybody that does not know where the pancreas is and what uh, the message that we would like to transmit that is the that pancreas cancer is becoming the second leading cause of death by cancer in 10 years. So this is an important um, emergency uh, health that we have to face and we have to, to put the, the, um, uh, all the elements on the table to make uh, it uh, much more uh, treatable and uh, with a better prognosis. Uh, uh, we have a, a, a very good program with uh, magnificent uh, speakers that are going to uh, tell us about uh, the state of the art and also the innovations that uh, uh, should pancreatic cancer have in the usual treatment. Uh, the University of Verona is uh, and uh, uh, a, a place of excellence for being treated with uh, pancreas cancer. Uh, they have uh, uh, nearly uh, 500 cases a year. Uh, they have a very good experience and they are working since many decades in this uh, field. It's a hard bone to row, but they go ahead with uh, very good uh, uh, results. So we have also a participation of the patients uh, by Iga Rawika from Poland, and uh, they will let us know all their um, uh, questions, all their uh, things that uh, have in mind about this uh, illness. Uh, uh, now I welcome you all. And uh, I am going to start with uh, the first uh, of the talks that uh, is uh, the um, state of the art regarding localized uh, pancreatic cancer uh, treatment. I'm going to share my screen. I hope you start seeing it. And it's the state of the art regarding localized resectable pancreatic cancer treatment. Uh, neoadjuvant, which means a treatment before surgery, medical treatment before surgery, and adjuvant treatments are uh, medical treatments or radiation treatments or uh, ablation treatments after uh, uh, surgical uh, treatment. Surgical treatment is supposed to be curative. Uh, see here a couple of uh, artists, uh, Aretha Franklin that died 
uh, with a very good voice uh, of pancreas cancer, Patrick Swayze, that uh, taught us how to dance. And it's a pity that we have lost a lot of people uh, that uh, with this uh, devastating uh, tumor. We are lacking a lot of things in pancreas cancer. And you see that uh, awareness is the first one. Nobody is aware about the uh, risks, about the uh, problems that uh, uh, pancreatic cancer has to uh, go ahead and, and gain uh, uh, positions uh, uh, to decrease mortality for our patients. We are lacking primary prevention because we do not know what is causing this illness. This uh, pancreatic cancer is a mixture of many things like uh, tobacco, alcohol, of course, uh, maybe overweight, also uh, chronic pancreatitis, etc. We have a lack of secondary prevention, lack of screening programs for an earlier diagnosis, because we do not have a high risk population defined yet to uh, uh, implement this uh, screening program. And a non-invasive method, it should be advisable, like a blood draw, a liquid biopsy, something easy. Uh, we do not have it uh, right now, although there are some uh, ones in the market that are trying to, to diagnose earlier uh, pancreatic cancer. Uh, we need improvement in diagnosis certainty, and you see that this is a, a thing a, a strange for the uh, 21st uh, uh, cycle uh, uh, that we are living in, because some patients are only diagnosed by imaging and other patients, half of them, are diagnosed by cytology, which uh, might uh, uh, harbor some mistakes because the pathologist can only say this is a carcinoma, but they, they do not see the architecture of the whole tissue and they cannot uh, be sure that this is a pancreatic adenocarcinoma. We do not have a health program for networking uh, among all the centers uh, interested in pancreatic cancer, and we need more funds for research for biobanks, for uh, uh, registries, etc., that are quite scanty at the European Union. So uh, we uh, can uh, identify uh, lesions that uh, are going to be lately uh, pancreatic cancer in certain populations, mainly. Uh, defined uh, by genetic uh, aspects like uh, first degree relatives of individuals with several uh, pancreatic cancer family members. If you have uh, a son or an uncle or a, a brother that has a family member, you are multiplying the choices of having a pancreatic cancer. The same with the germline syndromes with a higher incidence of pancreatic cancer, like BRCA1 and 2, uh, that also carries a higher uh, risk of having breast and ovarian cancer, P16 with melanoma, Lynch syndrome with colon syndrome, with colon cancer, etc. And also uh, persons with an inherited predisposition of early curable diseases, like uh, uh, pancreatic intraepithelial neoplasms, non-invasive IPMN, and uh, mucinous cystic neoplasms. Uh, the endoscopic ultrasound is widely used as, screening, as a screening test, but it is not uh, uh, as less invas invasive as a blood drawn. And uh, an idea screening would be this test based on 
blood or any liquid or even stools as we will see later. Resectable pancreatic cancer tumor is a tumor localized in the pancreas, not infiltrating the major mesenteric vessels and a microscopically complete resection, we call it R0, is among the most important indicators of a favorable long-term prognosis. On top of that, we see here the uh, superior mesenteric vein, the superior mesenteric artery. This is the tumor, and uh, uh, the tumor is not touching the superior mesenteric artery. There is uh, some fat uh, between both, it's uh, somewhat in contact with the superior mesenteric vein, but is resectable. And uh, this is the, the surgical procedure that uh, Dr. Professor Barbu will talk about that. On top of that, uh, the, the more you operate patients, the less postoperative complications you do have, as it's uh, demonstrated in the slide. But uh, we are here uh, in incidence rate. Pancreatic cancer is increasing the incidence and increasing also the mortality rates. And you see that even if you have a very good resection, only one third of patients are alive of, at uh, uh, five years. And if you do find some uh, regional uh, lymph nodes or uh, any illness uh, that uh, uh, besides the, the, the primary tumor, the uh, survival goes down to 12%. And if, it, if you have a metastatic disease, it's quite rare to survive five years. So there's a long uh, uh, way ahead and a big and hard work to do because pancreatic cancer uh, represents a systemic disease. If we operate a nodule of one centimeter that is not invading uh, vessels and two thirds of them recur is because microscopically uh, metastases are present in, by that time of surgery in, in the organs. And the treatment ideally includes the administration of systemic therapy regardless of its anatomical states. Uh, Preoperative surgery has uh, become a, a new standard for borderline, these uh, tumors that are invading vessels, but uh, after treatment, they may uh, uh, diminish the, the invasive component and, and they can become resectable. Uh, however, uh, after surgery, it's uh, difficult for some patients to tolerate it. And uh, you see that almost one third of the patients do not get post-operative uh, chemotherapy uh, because they are not able to do so. An administration of chemotherapy before pancreatectomy may represent the only way to assure that 100% of patients receive this treatment for a systemic disease and uh, simultaneously you select patients for surgery according to tumor biology. For these reasons, many high volume centers are increasingly considering this strategy for patients with resectable disease. These are uh, studies, meta-analysis up to 2018 with drugs that are not uh, presently uh, used like 5-FU uh, together with cisplatin, monotherapy with gemcyrabin, uh, gem with uh, S1, cisplatin, oxali, napaclitaxel, kevsirabin, etc. We are not considering here 
the most active uh, regiments that are uh, nowadays available. Uh, even that we see that neoadjuvant treatment uh, uh, favors also groups and all uh, the studies that have been done uh, uh, when compared with uh, upfront surgery. Uh, the problem is that the total number of patients is quite low, 23, uh, 15, 88, 39. Here is one of 144. There is one of 9 and 11, etc., etc. We see here the same, but with all drugs, favoring always neoadjuvant treatment, always favoring neoadjuvant treatment. <clears throat> but the adjuvant treatment, which means first upfront surgery and then uh, 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 chemotherapy, uh, the most effective treatment has been folfidinox. It's a mixture of 5-fluorouracil, uh, irinotecan, and oxaliplatin. This is the acronym. And uh, within this uh, uh, regimen, the uh, median overall survival uh, is 54.4 uh, months, which is by now unbeatable. Uh, it's much uh, bigger, of course, than that from gemcitabine, 26, 35, 37, and bigger than gemcap, that is 27, uh, and bigger than gemnap, that is 41. This uh, regimen was negative because the primary endpoint uh, did not meet the pre-specified uh, difference. This, uh, this is the APACT, uh, the GEMNAB against GEMSIRABINE. You see that the, the disease-free survival is quite similar. And uh, you see here the uh, forfirinox, the prodige uh, treatment that is increasing the survival of the patients at 44, 60 months. It's five years, five years and you find almost half of the patients that are still alive. So uh, this is important. I want to bring your attention to this work that was published a couple of years ago in clinical cancer research by O'Kane. And there are mainly two types of uh, pancreatic cancer. The bad one is uh, the basal uh, uh, phenotype that uh, has the worst prognosis, but responds better to uh, uh, napaclitaxel and uh, gemcitabine. And uh, the best uh, prognosis one is the classical one, which is more frequent and responds better to fulfirinox, but the uh, uh, basal one, the worst prognosis one, is not responding to this uh, regimen, as you see in the in the figure. So uh, this is an abstract that we brought to the uh, last ASCO meeting uh, to increase the efficacy of uh, metastatic pancreatic cancer. This is not the case here because we are talking about localized pancreatic cancer, but uh, mm, it's applicable because we wanted to treat all uh, kinds of subtypes of pancreatic cancer. The basal cell responding better to napaclitax cell and gemcitabine, and the classical subtype responding better to fulfirinox. And also, napaclitax cell, uh, given upfront, uh, has been associated with a desmoplastic stromal de depletion, as von Hoff uh, said in a paper uh, 10 years ago, and facilitates the access of all anti-cancer drugs to the pancreatic cancer cells. So we perform a 
phase one trial of sequential treatment of napaclitaxel uh, followed by uh, Folfox instead of Folfirinox because we thought it was too toxic to make both regimens sequentially. And uh, uh, it showed a good safety profile with full dose of both regimens. The, uh, the schema, you have it here, napaclitaxel gemcitabine full dose compared to the same regimen followed by four folks on day 29 and given uh, on a six-week uh, regimen. And these are the median overall survival results. This is napaclitaxel gemcitabine with a median overall survival of 9.7 instead of 8.5. That uh, appear on the impact uh, uh, publication, but uh, adding four folks in a sequential uh, uh, fashion, we reached 13.2 uh, median overall survival for these patients. This was never reached. The median overall survival for Forfirinox was 11.1 months. So we were happy. And uh, we uh, can propose a, a, a trial to demonstrate that this regimen given upfront of surgery, then 100% of patients could receive this. And uh, then after surgery, compared with the standard that is six months of Firinox, can be uh, better increasing the uh, efficacy rates. These are the ongoing pancreatic cancer uh, trials in the resectable setting. This is the uh, similar one to the one I have just proposed you, that is preoperative uh, versus adjuvant for Firinox, but it's only uh, uh, playing with Firinox and it's recruiting, and the end uh, uh, will be in 2026. And the other ones are dealing with different aspects and different drugs. The future is targeting the microenvironment. You know that 80% of the pancreatic cancer can be by microenvironment. Fibroblasts, uh, macrophages, uh, a lot of proteins that are talking to the uh, tumor cells and giving them messages to increase, to proliferate, to invade, to metastasize. And we can remodel this microenvironment for the benefit of the patients. And also the future is to be able to manipulate the oral uh, gut and PDAC microbiome because uh, pancreatic cancer has their own microbes inside not only the, the pancreatic cancer, the tumor cells, also the macrophages and also other immune cells have their own uh, uh, bacteria, fungus, and virus inside. And by being able to manipulate this in, for the benefit of the patient, it's uh, uh, the future from my point of view. We have just uh, published this uh, fecal mic microbiome uh, signature for pancreatic cancer patients that uh, could be a non-invasive and cost-effective approach for early uh, pancreatic cancer diagnosis, just like with colon cancer. And uh, uh, these signatures uh, uh, will uh, provide uh, a hypothesis regarding the etiology, the prevention, and a possible therapeutic intervention. We uh, have not to forget that physical exercise is quite important in any tumor, and especially in this devastating disease when uh, patients are very tired. And here there is uh, also an oral communication at Las Asco demonstrating that physical exercise increases efficacy in all aspects of the patients. 
together for, for sure with nutrition that Dr. Botella will uh, tell us later. Thanks very much to patients, families, caregivers, researchers, and you all. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Alfredo, for this in-depth presentation. Uh, you give a very good uh, uh, panorama of what uh, overview of what uh, uh, the actual stand uh, is regarding the treatment uh, of pancreatic cancer. And uh, I'm happy now to introduce to you Sorin Barbu. He is a member uh, of uh, Pancreatic Cancer Europe Board of Directors and he's professor at surgery, of surgery at uh, Yulio Hatiegano University of Medicine and Pharmacy in Cluj in Apoc in Romania. Thank you, Sorin, and thank you for sharing your presentation. Thank you. Uh... I sure I'm giving yes. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, I'm sorry. I was I just arrived from Vienna from a, a meeting of the UEG guidelines committee. So I didn't have the time to synthesize more, but I go through the slides. Uh, I, I don't know if besides uh, Salvatore Paella, there is other surgeon inside the meeting? No. Okay, so I'll go for it. So the place of surgery for more than 100 years were used to say surgery, let's do it. Surgery is the only chance for cure. About 20 years ago, I heard Professor William Traverso saying surgery is a first step to a longer survival. It was at the time where adjuvant chemo started to be effective to have results. And nowadays, unfortunately for surgery, we are saying surgery is a part of the multidisciplinary treatment of pancreatic cancer. So these are uh, the data all over the world. It seems that uh, the five-year survival for pancreatic cancer is 9%. It's from the DDS Cancer Coalition. But in Europe, we still have a median five-year survival of 3%. Uh, this is a material published by the UEG Public Affairs Committee when I was part of it. And... Uh, it's quite low. So why is this poor prognosis? Because we have late diagnosis, less than 20% can have a radical resection due to the fact uh, pancreatic cancer is the silent ki uh, killer, no symptoms, and we have no screening available. The second uh, motive is aggressive behavior of the tumor, genetic complexity, and so on, multiple levels of therapeutic resistance. So this is my favorite example. In 2006, Pavarotti was operated for pancreatic cancer, and all the journals said successful radical resection. And uh, he dies one year later of systemic metastatic disease. This is, the, uh, upon my opinion, the most illustrative example for the aggressivity of the tumor or inefficiency of the treatment. And another cause for poor prognosis, nihilistic attitude uh, to our pancreatic cancer surgery of the primary physician, including some gastroenterologists and so on. This is not my opinion. It was a study in 2007 in the States analyzing uh, 10 years where we had almost 10,000 patients with localized E12 and 0 M0 pancreatic cancer. And 71.4% did not have surgery. 20% uh, due to age comorbidity and 51.4% simply were not offered surgery. This is the nihilistic attitude to our pancreatic cancer surgery. So what should the surgeon do? 
she will for sure do a, uh, try to do a curative resection. Yeah, uh, obtaining ear zero because uh, the first study was uh, in Heidelberg 2004 and after all studies show that the most powerful independent predictor for long-term long survival is the ear zero resection. So surgeon is the fourth prognostic cancer for, for survival in pancreatic cancer. Uh, he must be a surgeon from a high case load, uh, high volume center. Yeah, number of resection per year and uh, mortality. And survival according to the uh, high uh, volume of uh, pancreatic resection. I think uh, uh, Alfred already said about resectable or locally pancreatic cancer borderline locally advanced. And I think uh, uh, Salvatore, the, the other surgeon, will talk about. But this is uh, a part of uh, the pancreatic cancer where we tried, help or not, by new adjuvant, adjuvant to perform surgery. What we have in the real life, uh, this is a study in 2017, ear zero resection are less than 20%. And uh, only, uh, you know, everybody knows 10, 20% of the uh, pre are primary resectable cancer in pancreatic cancer. So, it is also diminished by the zero resections that can that are performed our days. Uh, this is different in borderline locally advanced, yeah, where new adjuvant treatment is standard. Uh, and uh, these are the guidelines of the Japanese in 2019 clinical practice guideline for pancreatic cancer, where they are have a Nice recommendation. Is new adjuvant therapy recommended for patients with resectable pancreatic cancer? And the statement is combined gemcitabine and S1 therapy is recommended as new adjuvant therapy in patients with resectable pancreatic cancer. It, it was a low evidence and uh, uh, weak agreement, but it is in their guidelines. Should we use neoadjuvant therapy? Yes, for the borderline and locally advanced, but uh, we still think of using it in, in resectable, locally pancreatic cancer. So, because neoadjuvant chemotherapy aims to select patients with favorable biology, treat imaging occult M1 disease, and has the chance of ear zero resection and reduce the incidence of late relapse. So this is a study 2011, uh, which has this conclusion, no radio chemo, uh, no, there are no randomized control trials for this problem. 40% of the patient could be rejected and uh, less positive rejection margin uh, were obtained. So it is for sure to be used in locally advanced, but we are thinking about uh, uh, local pancreatic cancer is acceptable to use neoadjuvant. So what about staging laparoscopy? Uh, this was uh, Will Traverso about 15 years ago saying, if you feel the need to do a staging laparoscopy, your CT operator is not good enough. So, yes, yeah, staging lap laparoscopy can help you uh, see if there are unexpected peritoneal metastases uh, and uh, spare to the patient an open laparotomy. But uh, use select, uh, of staging laparoscopy should be selective. So these are some criteria. Large tumor, more than 3.5 centimeters, CT equivocal changes, 
and high level of CA99. Okay, another question that I think about uh, if you do stage in laparoscopy uh, or when starting operating a pancreatic cancer, you usually do positive uh, cytology, uh, lavage and cytology. But a positive cytology contraindicates resection. Uh, the answer was done by Claudio Bassi, who said no, because positive cytology is not included in stage four pancreatic cancer. It's only a prognostic factor. Um, about radical surgery, procedure should be tailored according to the tumor location in the head or in the body or tail. For the pancreatic head, we have pancreatodonectomy. Um, if we need to do preoperative biliary drainage, this will increase the risk of perioperative infection due to bacterial bilia. Uh, and this infection can postpone radical surgery. It was a, a randomized trial in the Netherlands which show uh, preoperative biliary drainage increase the risk of septic complication. So it should be done if there is severe jaundice, yes. Oh, and uh, if uh, neoadjuvant therapy need to be done. So regarding standard ripple versus pylorus preserving pancreatodonectomy, uh, we have some advantages in pylorus preserving better nutritional status, and we have safe survival as the classic ripple or pancreatodonectomy. Same recurrence. So. Advantages of the pyloral preserving higher rate of delay gastric and uh, no disadvantages higher rate of delay gastric empty, but it has no indication when the tumor invades uh, duodenum or the pylorus ring. So is the procedure of choice for pancreatic cancer, and I use this today, but in selected patient, as you see. So how we can achieve more in zero resection and uh, consequently a better survival? We have different procedures, the posterior approach, the artery first, uh, artery first approach, and uh, of course we must do the resection of the mesopancreas because the most frequently uh, invade the resection margin are the retroperitoneal margin. So artery first is a procedure that help. Uh, mesopancreas should be for sure resected. It was defined in 2007. This is the uh, tissue that must be resected before and after resection, you see. And uh, uh, aim is to obtain an ear zero resection. As principle of any resection for cancer is negative resection margin on block resection and no touch isolation. We, uh, we had in 2005, Hirota describing uh, no touch procedure for pancreatodonectomy. And uh, with, uh, of course, uh, uh, longer survival, because uh, during the manipulation of the tumor, there are a lot of uh, cancer cells circulating in the venous blood. So this is the conventional pancreatodonectomy and the no-touch procedure of Hirota. And uh, in the Japanese survey, uh, survival was better than in the class. Uh, you see, no touch pancreatectomy, 45% of five years. Of course, there were selected patients, but it's uh, significant. 
What about extending lymph lymphadenectomy? We had a lot of uh, randomized controlled trial, and uh, we're seeing no benefit for extended uh, lymph extended uh, DPC pancreatodenectomy. This uh, is a slide from Professor Traverso, who, who patients that could benefit from extended lymphadenectomy have usually N2 positive lymph nodes and zero distant metastasis and uh, resectable tumor. This group of patients represents 0.3% of the pancreatic cancer patients. So, no place, in my opinion, for extending uh, pancreatodenectomy. About the venous resection, we all know that uh, it's not a contraindication. Furthermore, uh, mortality morbidity rates do not increase, and uh, uh, don't abandon patients with inv venous invasion, duovascular is zero resection. Regarding the arterial resection, uh, we see here if uh, arterial resection is added to the portal resection, these two are the lowest survivor, close to the unresectable cancer. So arterial resection. Uh, Yes, these are the data from Professor Izbiki from Hamburg. You see, arterial resection. So, how can we be more, more aggressive? I remember Professor Bichler about 10 years ago, uh, ago saying in an EPC meeting, we must be more aggressive, more radical, but I asked, how we can be more radical? Uh, radical extensive surgery only if we'll change R1 to R0. If we offer the patient, open the patient and think we can go to R0 by extended surgery, we should go for it. For the body and tail pancreatic cancer, uh, we have procedure easier to perform than the pancreatodonectomy, but uh, we, if we look at the data, body and tail, uh, cancer has later uh, diagnosis. So because it's silent, less than 10% curative resection. Yeah, and a CR survivor for local stages in body and tail is 20% better than in, in head cancer. So in, um, I think about uh, 10 years ago, the uh, RAMS radical anti-grade modular pancreatic osplenectomy was introduced. Uh, which is a no-touch isolation and block resection aiming to R0. Uh, spleen preservation has no place in, in uh, uh, pancreatic cancer. So what should we do? Extended pa uh, pancreatodonectomy and extended distal pancreatectomy. For a distal pancreatectomy, uh, there are advantages, easier to perform, less time, no anastomosis, and, but also disadvantages, a great portion of the pancreas is rejected, so we'll have for sure in exocrine endocrine insufficiency. Problem is the tumors in the neck of the pancreas. What should we do? Uh, head resection or a distal pancreatectomy? And the uh, AGCC said, if it's more to the right, from the neck you do a, a pancreatic head resection, is more to the left, a distal pancreatectomy. Another problem uh, is uh, the laparoscopic uh, resection. Yeah? Uh, shorter length of stay in the hospital, longer operative time, and uh, 
few prospective study. Uh, few studies show survival, but but it's about the same. We see, uh, they say as open pancreatic resection. Short hospital stay is not so clearly because uh, uh, yeah, the initial hospital stay is shorter than in open surgery, but uh, if we include the readmission for different complication, there is no difference with the open uh, pancreatectomy. So I remember Professor Hova Reber saying, Reber saying in about 15 years ago, laparoscopic pancreatectomy is not yet a procedure for adenocarcinoma. Probably the evolution will show it's as good as open pancreatectomy. And the take home message is surgery is still the best chance for cure if pa in pancreatic cancer if followed by appropriate chemotherapy. Neoadjuvant treatment, it's waiting for evidence to say that. Uh, it uh, can be useful in localized pancreatic cancer. Pancreatic surgeon must provide to all resectable patients the best survival chances and the good quality of life by achieving the ear zero resection with low, as possible, low mortality and morbidity. This is best done in high volume centers by high volume surgeons. And our hope is to have a effective screening programs and new effective treatments. So as Einstein said, we probably need more time to think about it. Okay. Unfortunately, I do not have any financial disclosure to, to offer you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sorin. Thank you very much.